How's it going, everybody? My name is Ruffle Relics. Today, we got ourselves some Pokemon news that I think you guys will like. Starting things off, we have the official news from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet confirming that we are going to be getting these four guys showing up in, of course, the Terra Raid battles. Now, of course, you guys know these are actually every single week, so this is nothing too crazy. Every single week, uh, we have basically a Terra Raid battle event on the weekends, which is pretty cool. I appreciate that they do it. They kind of try to mimic the whole Pokemon Community Day aspect uh, and try to do that in Scarlet and Violet as well. Unfortunately, though, it is easy to get these Pokemon in general. But the four Pokemon you will be able to get is going to, of course, be Stone Journer, Ice Q, Armor Rouge, and Cerro Ledge, right? So those guys are available. In case you guys are curious about their actual event information, it's on the screen right here on Cerebi. They're going to be level 75, uh, random terror type in this case, random nature. Uh, shiny rate is going to be standard, and in terms of mark, there is none, at least on that fella, and so on and so forth. If you scroll through, you'll see it pretty much stays consistent throughout. So they're going to be between, I think, uh, like three star to five star. I think that's what the actual range is. Uh, and it's going to be going all the way until, of course, February 18th at 23.59. So February 18th is the weekend, right? It's Sunday. And guys, guess what? We don't have more than about a week left. Okay, it's Friday now. We don't have more than a week left or so, a week and a half, until guess what? Pokemon Day. Yes, Pokemon Day is almost here. It's almost upon us. It's almost time, which means we have a lot of things to discuss. Second of all, though, there is some other Pokemon official news, and it's regards to Pokemon Unite, which actually is a really weird one. It is an update about Pokemon Unite, which is uh, that it's going to be adding a shiny Rayquaza as an opponent in the Thea Sky Ruin stage for February 22nd through March 7th. Now, I want to say something important about this. This, of course, is a connection to Pokemon Horizons, because in Pokemon Horizons, the anime show, the new animated series, uh, they have specifically a whole thing about Shiny Rayquaza. However, we we did see a rumor that posted this information, a rumor from 4chan of all places, that kind of predicted this a few, like, I want to say a month ago almost, uh, when I actually saw a post about this. I mean, maybe not exactly a month, but it's been almost like around the beginning of February, I would argue. So it has been a while since I saw it, but guess what? I did see it, which means that there is a, a probability, a chance, okay, a chance, I'm just saying a chance, a probability, that that rumor could have been real. I just don't remember which one it was because I've covered so many rumors daily that I forget which ones are which, but nonetheless... I think it's a worthwhile thing to keep in mind. So, that's been updated. Then we have some actual stuff from the legit leaker, okay? So, this is Riddler Koo. Now, keep in mind, Riddler Koo um, knows a lot of stuff, but also doesn't know everything. He can't always have access to every little piece of information. However, he tweeted out this image, uh, which is actually an image that was originally posted by Penn Paladin, an awesome artist and content creator, saying that I'm thinking about back to Koo's riddle, Paradox Unova, and the fact that Koo retweeted Elite Robo's box art. Hmm. What if Pokemon Black and Gold and White Silver altered the timeline and give us Paradox uh, collided versions of Black and White and Gold and Silver Legendaries? Question mark. And then he had like two drawings here of these two guys. And I actually have a really cool artwork I'm going to show later uh, that was drawn by none else than Subarashi. And it's actually of a Ho-Oh and a, uh, a Lugia fusion uh, with Zekrom and um, Reshiram. But nonetheless, though, this is where the original post came from. And it was because this person, Elite Robo, drew up this concept for a black, gold, and silver white game. Like, basically a fusion between the Johto region and Unova region into one game. Um, and what was funny was that in this post, below it, none else than Riddler Koo actually replied to it. Now, I don't know where it is. There it is, right? Love this ID. So he literally just tweeted out this. And people got really just shocked and stunned about this information. Um, because they were just, you know, surprised. They loved this idea. They loved this, like, concept. And they were just excited for it, to be honest. Like, people just really liked the idea of it. Um, and the fact that he said this made people very sus. Like, oh, does this mean we're getting that? Well, not really. So if you look at this post right here and you translate it just by Google, it literally just says, white dragon chicken, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, 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 usually in Spanish, I think that's how people write, ha, ha, ha. Uh, right, like just laughing, uh, but I don't know if that's what he's doing as well. Nonetheless, though, there is a breakdown of this tweet by none else than, um, of course, our friend Jan. So Jan basically broke this down and said, uh, this is the content for the English English world, in case you don't know. It's well known in the Chinese community that K, aka Riddler Ku, hates a specific Reshiram profile picture account on the Chinese social media. So yes, there is a uh, one of the quote-unquote Chinese uncles, but it's actually just a random person posting stuff that claims to have information, and he has like a whole breakdown thread here about that person, which is pretty crazy. You guys can see there's the Reshiram guy right here, and he really doesn't like him, but he's also, that guy is also well known in that community. Uh, nonetheless, though, what Jan is saying here is that 
that that person is called the white dragon chicken. And as someone just made Reshiram into a chicken, exactly what they call that person. So basically, he's referring to um, the drawing that was made by our friend here. Um, what you might call him? Like, uh, that was made by our little buddy here, uh, Pen Paladin, right? So basically, he's trying to imply that he's not actually talking about this being a hint. He's not trying to say that this is a hint in any way, shape, or form. Rather, that this is supposed to be kind of a, um, what's the la a layman word of, to, uh, like, the most, like, basic way to put this? He's basically trying to imply that this is more so just a a bit of a joke, okay? A bit of an inside joke from, from him, right? It's a bit of an inside joke uh, from the side of, like, you know, this guy. Like, basically, it's just an inside joke with him. So, again, I don't know. I would love to know what you guys think about this. But, nonetheless, it is still just considered more or less a inside joke from him. So, moving on from that, though. What else do we have? Well, we do actually have official news as well in regards to this. Uh, an update, Serbia update, a new event has been announced for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in Japan, which really sucks for the rest of us, but it is what it is, where you can get a Snorlax at the Pokemon centers from February 23rd all the way until February 29th, which is unfortunate I'm not there because I wouldn't mind getting one. And basically, in context, this is a Project Snorlax campaign which has been running in Japan the past year. This, uh, this site is called Stay Together with Snorlax. So basically, it's a whole promotion about Snorlax, and unfortunately, it's not available for the West, so it is what it is. We're just going to have to deal with it more or less uh, and accept reality. Um, nonetheless, though, moving on, we have this post from Pokemon Masters EX where they said, Whoa, Colrus sure is excited about something. Wonder what Pokemon has him so intrigued. Share your guesses in the replies. And people were just guessing, but he just says Machine Princess, which in this case could be Magirna. At least that's what people are, are guessing, right? Um, of course, this has nothing to do with Scarlet and Violet, but the fact that he's even like giving information on this, because I think he has had leaks on. Um, on non-mainline stuff as well. Like, it's not just mainline Pokemon games from him. Sometimes he does have information on, on other stuff as well, like Masters EX. So this was a little bit interesting here. It could be that he's trying to say that Colrus is going to be getting himself a, uh, a Magirna, which uh, would be uh, pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much where that ends. Moving on, we have some 4chan stuff. Uh, to take a look at. First of all, people were just kind of like basically talking about this whole post uh, that he made. That's where I actually saw it. I originally didn't even see it on Twitter first. I saw it on, on uh, 4chan. People were just talking about it. And speaking of 4chan, they do have this post right here that I also saw, which is uh, kind of a bit of a weird one. First of all, the image above or next to me here is just an AI image. Uh, so it's, you know, nothing. This is, doesn't mean anything, just to put it bluntly. Uh, as for what it says, though, is one, Sarah Ledge is going to appear in Pokemon Unite. Haven't really seen anything about that. Um, we did, well, I mean, we do have a Sarah Legend Armor Rogue event right now at Skull and Violet, so maybe that could coincide really well, but that's only for a weekend. Uh, but yeah, I don't really know. I haven't really seen much about that. I think I've seen something about Armor Rogue and Sarah Legend at some point, but I can't really, I'm gonna be real, I can't recall. Moving on, he says, uh, two, new Pokemon movie and a mythical to be revealed. Originally planned for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but now pushed back to Generation 10. Oh, okay, so that would actually make kind of sense. Uh, them pushing content back, is not too far-fetched. Like, it's not too far to assume that they would do something like that. Like, it's it's not too out of the realm of possibility, to put it bluntly, right? Uh, it's not too crazy for them to do that. So, again, that could make sense. Uh, I, I digress, though. It could make sense, but it could also not. Uh, the, finally, the last thing he has to say, and this is the one that is a little bit... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be real. This is the one that like, gets me a little bit confused. So, here's what he says. Now, Game Freak has heard concerns from the community and will be delaying Generation 10 indefinitely, but we'll show off some concept art. That's not gonna happen. Like, listen... Uh, Game Freak, as much as they like money, okay, sorry, Game Freak, sorry, as much as they, they would want to maybe make a really, really good Pokemon game, they also have to make money, okay, and Pokemon makes money because they're able to pump out new games every year, and that's what Game Freak makes a lot of money from as well, um, but also because every new Pokemon game brings hype to everything else, like, I've said this a million times, and I'll say it again, Pokemon doesn't really make money from their video games. Like, sure, there is a paycheck that comes from it, and there is a, a revenue that comes through the video game sales, sure, but they make majority of their money from merch sales. Now, how do you get the merch to sell? Well, you bring out new games, they introduce new Pokemon, they give people a reason to go buy, go buy new merch, you know? So, like, example, this guy right here. This guy is merch, okay? They make more off of me buying one of these, you know, guys than they make off of me buying the video game. As much as the video game might make, like, you know, 60, 60 bucks, uh, you know, $60 from a single purchase or, you know, 25 to 30 bucks off of the DLC or 35 I don't even remember how much the DLC cost. You know, sure, that might make them, you know, $90 or something like that, give or take, right, depending on uh, currency exchange. Sure, it makes them about $90, but I have way more than $90 in plushes here that, you know, 
they probably made more money off of me in terms of like the return on investment. Plus people spend more on merch and stuff like that than they do anything else. Like I know because I was at the Pokemon Center in Japan. I went to like about five different ones and I spent way too much money on merch, uh, which is stupid. Don't do that. It's not necessary. You don't need all these freaking things. I just did it because it looks like a cool background. But um, nonetheless though, what I'm going to try to say is this. They make more money from merch. So them delaying the game would also delay merch. They would delay the movies. They would delay whatever else they are working on would have to be delayed. TCG would have to be delayed. Like, keep in mind, the TCG also, like the Pokemon trading card game, also coincides with whatever the current generation is and whatever the next game is. Them delaying Generation 10 means that they would have to make new freaking games. Okay, sorry, new TCG cards covering the same stuff throughout another like year plus worth amount of time because he says indefinitely and that's where you lose me if you said they're delaying it for a certain amount of time i would believe you more but that's where you lost me uh, but i'll continue through the rest of this and just read through it he says but we'll show off some concept art they plan to bring back all the pokemon for generation 10 games uh that's also highly unlikely generation 10 will also follow scarlet and violet and be fully open world the region is based off of australia Okay, Game Freak has been re revisiting old scrapped Pokemon and tweaking their designs to be more modern. Uh, so you may see some fan favorites unreleased Pokemon in Generation 10. In the meantime, Ilka has been working on another game due to be out in November of this year, a Unova Pokemon game set in a new timeline. The game once again has a chibi art style, but, it, uh, but a neat twist on the Unova stories you all know. The original dragon is the main antagonist of the story. Again, I highly doubt that this, this I mean, listen, I'm not highly doubting Unova, but I'm highly doubting this exact rumor post. So I'm going to give this one a solid three out of 10. Um, again, it's just not doing much for me at all. It's just not a good rumor. Plus, including the AI image doesn't really help. Moving on, we have another post here, and it's from uh, another 4chan user. And this one uh, continues on and just has some other stuff as well. So let's just read through it really quickly. Again, we have a lot of like rumor stuff like this that we usually cover during the day. But today, I want to just kind of keep it short uh, and go over to something a bit more interesting than this. But let's just go through this one really quick. Now, new Pokemon game information leak. New Pokemon game planned to be shown in the next Presents. All right, that's kind of obvious. Uh, it's planned to be a big game, and it's called Pokemon Providence, and it's set in the far future in Unova. It's basically a combination between Scarlet and Violet and Legends Arceus. Okay, sure. Um, that sounds fair. In the game, you begin your adventure entering inside a simulation. Every time you advance in the game, you change, uh, you change from the sim simulation. Every simulation has a different biome, and it works like an area in Legends Arceus. Uh, okay, strong and agile style don't return, but there's a new battle mechanic, Pokemon Fusions. Uh, I highly doubt that. As much as I love Fusions, I don't think they're going to bring that back. The only time we've had Fusions and they were an actual feature was black and white. I just highly doubt they're bringing them back. I have been saying that maybe that should be the next gimmick, like Fusion Pokemon should be the next Pokemon gimmick, because Fusions are really popular in Pokemon, okay? That's something that people love. But I highly doubt they would do that. It would just add too much work. <laughs> uh, not every Pokemon has a fusion, but there are only a few combinations with different Pokemon. Guy's uh, bad guy... Wait, game's bad guy is Colrus. Okay, he traveled time uh, to time and hacks the simulations, glitching some Pokemon, making them bigger and stronger, those being the game's bosses. The game is based on quests and has a few minor mechanics like fixing bugs in the simulation, battling some Pokemon, and the game Legendary is a new Dragon Fairy Pokemon. It's a fusion between Zekrom, Reshiram, and Kyurem. Game starters are Squirtle, Trico, and Fennekin. The game will release on Switch and next year on the second Switch. Frankly, I like this. I like the idea of it. It sounds cool, but in terms of believability, it's not really giving me much to work with. Uh, plus, the image included is just a fan art of a fusion of the you know the three legendaries from Black White to Black White Two. So again. Mm, no, I don't know, Chief. I'm not really feeling it. I'm not feeling anything from this. I'm not getting any sort of uh, indication that this would feel realistic or real or anything like that. Um, but either way, I'm just going to leave it at that. So that's pretty much that rumor, guys. Now we're going to go into a very long post. So this is a post by Cool Trainer Ace, who runs Victory Road News. If you guys want to check him out, uh, feel free to do so. You guys can go to the Twitter account right here. Uh, it's just a, um, a news aggregator, uh, a kind of a weekly kind of uh, news update thing, in case you want that uh, in your email. But basically, he did a whole breakdown here. And this is a long, 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 long thread uh, that goes through... A ton of stuff uh, talking about like generally what the next logical thing would be for pokemon where to go next the generation stuff like that so sit back relax it's gonna be a long section right now so starting things off mainline pokemon games are at a generational crossroad that's true now ahead of pokemon day 2024 i spent five hours researching and writing the state of the mainline pokemon games 
Here it is. And I think, like, this is a really good thread, by the way. And, and honestly, I think you guys should read it yourself if you don't want to listen to me. But here's what he says. In the past two and a half years, we've seen Game Freak experimenting in three different ways with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Legends Arceus, and, of course, Skull and Violet, which is very true. Those three have been the games that have been kind of trying a bit different stuff, right? Because Brilliant Diamond was a remake, but it was a very much one-to-one -one remake. Legends Arceus was a first time trying to open world and also having the character move during battle, um... You know, just a very more like action combat type style game. And Scarlet and Violet was a standard Pokemon adventure, but in a fully open world with about 18 gyms to take on. One, passing remakes to a third party developer, which was Ilka, open world with Scarlet and Violet Legends Arceus, and major game mechanic experimentation with Legends Arceus. Very true. Now he says, you could grab 100 random fans on r slash Pokemon or Twitter, and then be almost evenly divided on which of those three titles were their favorite and least favorite. All their own set of quirks and issues, all represented steps forward in different ways, but I didn't quite come together into a hallmark release. Two step forwards and one step back, as they say. Yep, in Pokemon case, it's actually one step forward and two steps back. Ignoring the uh, that fans of anything are uh, of anything are louder and generally bigger a holes. With every passing year, there is a justifiable discontent in Pokey Paradise. Fans may not agree but uh, on what they want, but it's a consensus that they want something more. And by more, I mean depth, not breadth. But, uh, you know, not like, you know, expanding it, but rather like make the actual content there. Like, you know, what is this saying, actually? I think it's like um, as wide as an ocean, but as deep as a pond, right? Like uh, it's like kind of like that or as a puddle. Uh, quality, not quantity. After uh, blistering release schedule between November 2021, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and November 2022, Scarlet and Violet, with Legends Arceus in between in January 2022, it's time to slow things down. But is that even possible? Now, there's obvious pressure to keep up with the anime, merchandise, and TCG. Don't believe me? According to the sales and revenue numbers from 2023, the top income streams for Pokemon franchise all-time are 1. Licensed merchandise. 100... Oh, my lord. That's a lot of... That's a lot of zeros, man. That's a lot of zeros. Um... I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's so. That's the let's see. That's a million. That's nine hundred million. That's two billion. That's a hundred and two billion dollars in uh, revenue from just licensed merchandise, right? Like, that is just merch. Uh, and then the trading card game has actually made more than the mainline games, which is at twenty one billion. And then you have the games, which are actually at sixteen billion. So. Oh, jeez, man. Now, those numbers are billions, in case you didn't notice, and they're snowballing. Year over year, Pokemon regularly sees record profit growth, including a monster uh, a monster 36.5% increase between 2021 and 2022. Why? Because between 2021 and 2022, we had the drop of what? We had the uh, the end of the Pokemon, you know, Sword and Shield with the release of uh, the DLC of those games. And you also had BDSP, and the beginning of 2023, you also had Legends Arceus already going into it, so there was already pre-purchases of that. Now, merchandise and TCG depend on new Pokemon. New Pokemon come from mainline game releases. Doesn't take uh, take an MBA, uh, you know, uh, to see that the games are largely a delivery vehicle for intellectual property property to drive more licensing and product sales. The one thing I've been saying for years now. Now, Game Freak is tied to Pokemon with golden handcuffs, victims of their own utility. They're the HM mule of the entire franchise, tasked with moving the, uh, from gen to gen. They gotta feed the Snorlax, which brings us to the new youngsters on the route, Palworld and Pocket Pair. Love it, hate it, don't care about it. We can't discuss the state of Pokemon in games, games in, 2020, in February 2024 without mentioning Palworld. The plethora of bugs and runaway hit of a small, scrappy company like Pocket Pair draw ironic comparisons to the original Pokemon Red, Blue, Green, and Game Freak and Creatures Inc. More than 12 million copies sold with another 7 million plus people playing on Game Pass as of two weeks ago puts Palworld on numbers rivaling Diamond and Pearl's lifetime sales after a single month. And is it a Pokemon killer? No. But in the context of this discussion, it doesn't matter if Pokemon sues them or not. It doesn't matter if they ripped off models or not. Stolen models don't account for the success that the game, uh, game is seeing. And no, not every Palworld player is a Pokemon player. Who knows uh, what the percentage is? But the Pokemon fans who enjoy it love Palworld for the free features they've wanted in Pokemon for years. One, open world. We kind of already have that. Real-time combat. That's definitely something people people have wanted. I want that. Uh, but open world, we kind of already have. Real-time combat, something I want, but I know maybe Pokemon fans don't want. Uh, for an older audience, sure. Creatures can follow you. That's must be in Pokemon. Like, that's a must-have. True multiplayer experience. That would be nice, too. All creatures available in one version. Yes, please. I don't want to have to buy two games to get it. Hundreds of creatures can be used as mounts. 
Yes, that's another one. Uh, also, I think base building, like uh, secret bases, right? Like I say base building and I saw people be like, I don't want to be building, I want secret base. Yes, base building, secret base is the same shit. It's just bring them back, like bring them in some form of shape. Uh, Pokemon contests, a better post game, right? Like an actual post game, stuff to do in the end of the game that isn't just shiny hunting and VGC battling. Like it's just, you know, something else. It's not about Pal World, uh, what Pal World is doing. It's about what Pokemon isn't doing with the resources and position they have in the markets. Now, BDSB is often labeled as a soulless remake, a shell of Platinum's glory pawned off to Ilka for a quick cash grab. Regardless of the end product, it's a turning point in the life of Pokemon. And Game Freak, because they finally let go or were forced to release the development reigns of a mainline Pokemon game. Going forward, expect to see more third-party developed mainline Pokemon games. Whether they succeed or fail depends largely on how much these devs are forced to paint by numbers and color inside the lines or not. Leaving the chibi art style out of the discussion, complaints about ROM BDSP revolve around the fact that it leaves out a number of Platinum's features and uh, didn't add anything notable to the game. Before you say Grand Underground, I said notable. Compared to that, to the, that numerous of delightful tweaks and improvements we saw in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. To be fair, if you think about it, even Oras, and people liked Oras a lot. I loved Oras, but that also was missing a bunch of features. But still, people prefer that one way more than BDSP. I think it's also a recency bias thing. People just like to hate on Pokemon, especially now, and it's just easier. Like I feel like there is just an easier way to hate on things. And I'm not here to defend a massive company that has billions of dollars in revenue. But uh, I do think it's easier to d complain about stuff because if you hate BDSP, then you hate Diamond and Pearl too. Like it's all obvious the games are one-to-one -one. They, 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 they're very much the one-to-one -one thing so reading the oddish leaves it looks like all remakes get, i like the little puns uh it looks like all the remakes may get the third party shipment however the numbers aren't great as the latest financial report bdsp has still sold 10,000 less copies than let's go pikachu and eevee still the best-selling remake of all time to this point but hardly jaw-dropping and now wouldn't it just be easier to sell ports of older gents give the trainers what they want Sure. Up front, I admit that I am a team PLA, and it's uh, Arceus, by the way. <laughs> bad news uh, Bad news is the sales numbers just weren't good. It sold less than 15 million copies, making it the worst-selling game that wasn't a remake or a Part 3 ever. Of course, we've never seen anything like Legends Arceus before. Would it have sold better by not, uh, not being on the heels of BDSP? Possibly. Some players have had uh, to make a financial choice between the two games. Yes, and also keep in mind... BDSP could have sold more because there are two versions. And that always means that somebody out there will buy both. There's always going to be that one guy who's going to buy both games, okay? And that's instantly going to bump up the actual sales. Whenever there is two versions of a Pokemon game, it sells better. And that's the same thing here. The fact that it sold 15 million copies with a single version is actually incredible. Uh, possibly, some players have uh, had to make final, ch uh, you know, a financial choice between the two. Now, the bold new direction is important for the mainline games. Even if it didn't translate to huge sales numbers, Game Freak took a chance. Isn't that what we've asked for all along? Battle styles, storyline, deck size, and catching mechanics are all personal preference. I can't wait to see what they learned and hopefully implement from PLA and whatever comes next. My hard hopes for Legends doesn't go the way of Conquest or Colosseum, forgotten spin-offs lost to time. Then again, Legends isn't a spin-off, it is a mainline Pokemon game at the end of the day, but it is a experimental game. Scarlet and Violet in, uh, intensified division between fans of the mainline series, even more so than Sword and Shield. I'm not a graphic snob, but, uh, but the clipping, glitches, and general performance issues can't be ignored. Even if they didn't impact your enjoyment of the game, the non-linear promises, uh, promises were half-baked, like lipstick painted on a lechonk. Multiplayer has its own set of issues, especially with the connection failures and sometimes clunky timers and ray battles. Instead of the Let's Go feature and a dedicated ride, fly, surf, climb Pokemon in Coridon Maridon, could we not have simply used the Pokemon in our team to serve the same function in the other uh, overworld, similar to Let's Go Pikachu Navy? I agree. Synchro, mach synchro machine and that's the one that i think is going to be important guys synchro machine i think is what is what's going to define uh the future for like the next game i think the synchro machine is going to be important uh the synchro machine has potential but it feels like they tacked on or uh, tech is tacked on right now coming at the very end of the game cycle in the last dlc is a gimmick without purpose this goes for many other features in scarlet valley including the open world and the academy classes plus relationship events or whatever you want to call them now they've been introduced i want to know how they'll reiterate on these or how to be iterated on in future titles. I was also a little worried to find out. Uh, like I'm also a little worried to find out. So that's another thing. Pokemon does this all the time. They introduce a future, a feature, a cool new feature, and then they just drop it. Like this happens all the bloody time. It is really frustrating, but they always do this, and it's just annoying. Um, moving on, he says, what's coming next? Well, we're looking at the first games to be released in a post-Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet world, which were partially developed in tandem, meaning PLA didn't influence Scarlet and Violet. The saying goes in construction that you can have you can have something one 
Fast, two, cheap, or three, quality, but not all three. In a strange compromise, Pokemon and Game Freak generally gave us one fast, two, not cheap, and three, debatable overall quality for three releases in a row. Guessing what comes next is like trying to predict the pattern of a Spinda. Gen 10 isn't here yet. That leaves us likely to get one off, uh, get a one-off or two to bridge the gap between now and Generation 10, Switch 2, and Pokemon's 30th anniversary in 2026. One, third-party remake. Of course, that could happen. Let's go style game or a Legends prequel sequel. This is fine. It's also, uh, it's also, wait, this is fine. It's also fine, but unlikely. If we don't get something new this year, would any logical fan really be upset with that? With Gen 9 sunsetting, Game Freak, the company, uh, Pokemon company, and fans find themselves at a crossroads years in the making. Will the powers that be take that, take what they learned and experiment with, experimented with from the trio of recent releases and make a leap forward? Or are they satisfied printing money with the same formula, plus or minus a, ga a grab? bag of features and mechanics the next releases may tell the tale i think it's a great post by the way uh, again shout out to cool trainer ace uh cool trainer ace who for making this uh and he, we actually do have a little bit of a point here from jan it says two minor errors don't change the whole message of the article vdsp being uh, the best-selling remake let's go because eevee is a remake of pokemon yellow which makes uh, that the best-selling remake true pla becoming a forgotten spin-off uh pla isn't a spin-off according to game freak that's true as well um they, pla is a mainline game so it's not a spin-off but i don't think pla is gonna return in any way shape or form at least that's the way i view it i don't think we're gonna see it come back in any any time soon um nonetheless this is a great post because it gives you a general idea of where we are with pokemon of course it has its own little issues and stuff but i think i'm gonna use this article as a good template for a video i want to make about the state of pokemon um eventually and uh, we'll make that when we do but either way ladies and gentlemen that's pretty much it of course check out cool trainer ace of course his uh twitter account is at victory road news so go check him out you can also go to his like website here and subscribe to get yourself a newsletter from him every single week with the latest pokemon information but that's gonna be it for today guys thank you all for watching see you next time